So a lot of my videos take a uh, long time due to the amount of editing that I put into them um, to fact check, etc. This conversation is going to be straight off the rip, zero editing, uh, because you know I know what I need to say, I know what I have to say. It's something that I think about all the time, and you know I have wanted to uh, have this discussion for a minute. And God really put it on my heart today to do it. So this morning I went into the gym uh, to get in my morning workout. And um, the 9 a.m. session is a competition kickboxing session. So, you know, it was a pretty good workout. We're all sweating and everything. Well, good friend of mine and a big supporter of both the channel and uh, my fighting career got to work with me and we, we started having a conversation and stuff and for a while it was mostly about the other things on this channel the Bigfoot alien stuff and my fight career well as we were drilling um, we got on the subject of like fear and fear essentially fear before going out to fight he asked me if I get afraid and I told him yeah it's probably the scariest thing that you know I encounter um, you know regularly it feels like I'm waiting to go out and be executed in front of a crowd and he kind of replied back and I don't want to say his name in case you know some of this isn't stuff he would necessarily want to share um, but he was just like man you know I wish I could do that sometimes you know I find myself doubting and uh, you know not sure I can understand God's plan and when I read the Bible I just you know a lot of times I don't understand it and it's like that's completely normal those kinds of things are completely normal and I kinda wanted to use this video to like share with others the process I went through as a Christian and honestly how I know God is real so I'm kinda gonna start at the beginning of it all just like most people I grew up uh, in a household where you know they said they were Christian and you know my parents they love God and they are Christian uh, you know while, while we're here at this topic I hear the term fake Christian thrown out all the time that doesn't exist if you call yourself a Christian you are a Christian it doesn't matter if you're a murderer if you're a thief you're a Christian because Jesus truly did pay the wages of sin and I think that that's the thing that I and many other people have the most trouble like accepting I think it's healthy to be aware that you're not perfect and that you've made mistakes but I don't think it's healthy to continue to beat yourself up over stuff I know that even a year ago I was a completely different person and you know looking back all the time I feel guilty about things I said or did and those things are forgiven once you bring them to God and ask for forgiveness. I have an interesting thought experiment and if you have an answer go ahead and comment below. But if Satan himself decided, hey, I give up. I want to confess my sins upon God and ask for forgiveness. What do you think God would say? I'm under the impression that God would forgive him if he came to him. But Satan's ultimate sin is pride. And that's actually where the name Pride Slayer comes from, if you don't know. Sorry, you can't even see it on there. But that's where it comes from. It doesn't come from me slaying other people's pride. It comes from slaying my own and submitting before God. Um, and that's what the only thing that's truly necessary to be a Christian is being able to submit before God. And I'm not perfect at all. I cuss all the time. I'm wrathful. I'm prideful. Um, you know, I've gotten most of that under control now but it's still stuff I face every single day and what do I do about it every single day I bring it to him every single day a uh, piece of advice I have for you is uh, download the Bible app on your phone uh, another thing that people have trouble with is understanding the Bible so I was chatting with my friend this morning and I had a good piece of advice for him in my opinion so on the Bible app you can there's hundreds of different translations of the Bible and there are Christians who will disagree with me when I say this, but the Bible was written down by man, inspired by God's Word. Over time, it's been divided up, translated, 
uh, pieces removed and non-canonized and been called inspired word but not biblical canon and I personally don't feel convicted that the the NJV Bible or KJV whatever version you have is all there is to God's Word and if you read it and follow it exactly then you're gonna have a good relationship with God that's not how it works it's like that would be like working out once and being in shape in my opinion I think you have to constantly like try to understand the word and the Bible app is a great tool just because you can look at it in different versions and sometimes they mean different things like for example on my arm here I have um, an angel and it's supposed to represent like God's protection and in it I say let the or it says it's Isaiah 11 11 it says let the Lord fight and be silent and if you look at it in other versions it'll say let the Lord do battle and be patient and many other different translations but it's one of those things like context is very important and if you're actively seeking God's Word and you're really trying to understand something you will but you know he he started you know kinda of mentioning that you know he doubts himself a lot and he's you know I feel like he almost wanted to ask me how I even knew God was real and I you know I, I can't express how how sure I am that God is real because it's like asking me if my sons or my daughters or my wife in the next room are real I am lucky enough to have seen God and I'll elaborate further on as I as I go into the video uh, but I have physically and mentally and spiritually seen God act in my life and a lot of people don't have that relationship with him and it comes from being unable to submit and accept him and um, essentially you know my friend he was talking about the other videos on my channel like my alien and Bigfoot videos uh, but he said you know man I wish you could post a video every day and the big big problem with that is that you know there's so much editing that goes into it I like to fact check uh, everything I'm sharing and get good information for you as well as graphics and and sound and make sure all the volume etc is good but you know when he said that I was like you know this was an opportunity for God to use my gift of gab the gift of speaking uh, to share to maybe testify and share with you what I've been through so <clears throat> really you know I grew up um, always prayed to God but around 13 and 14 like a lot of people you know I kinda became like goth and really uh, into myself if that makes sense and I know you know there's a lot of hormones and things that go on as a teenager and you know not really being able to deal with them or understand them but it, it was my fault and I'm glad I went through those things I would alienate myself I would sit alone at lunch or sit with like one other person we would sit at our own table alone and alienate ourselves. and you know I was kinda hateful to people a lot I thought I was smarter than everyone that I encountered um, I thought I was better than everyone I encountered but just that I would never got my fair shot etc but as I grew older I, I fell more and more away from God and I started to resent him if you will and I would ask the questions a lot that I get asked well if God's real why does he let horrible things happen and while we're on the subject it's ultimately a test pain is something that is like fleeting and it's so hard for people to accept and I know there are going to be things in my life where I'm not going to want to accept that answer I'm not going to want to accept that my pain is part of a grander design and is part of a positive continuance for others that horrible pain you might feel might be a thousand other people's heaven without you even realizing it and everything painful that I've ever encountered has always ended up being for the better and that's really one of the things that made me trust God was understanding that when you submit submission is painful you're being submitted that you're in pain and you have to give up surrender and you surrender to him you don't surrender to anyone else you surrender to him and it's like that process is necessary for growth but you know when I was 18 and 19 years old a lot of people know my stories so I'm not gonna sit and blab about it for a while but you know I was not doing the right thing um, I ended up you know getting in a fight with someone and it, it, leaded, it led to me being incarcerated 
and my now eight-year-old daughter was one at the time she could you know she understood who I was on the phone when I called from jail and you know hearing her voice on the phone you know saying daddy daddy and thinking about me doing 10 years and her basically growing up without me there was the at most absolutely horrifying thing um, that I've ever encountered in my life but let me tell you I, I wouldn't trade the experience for the world because I originally thought I was kind of gonna like be out that day I didn't really think everything was gonna like stick yada yada well when I first went in my bond was 5,000 and you know I'm I'm a dumbass and I smiled in my mugshot and they ended up raising my bond to 50,000 and you know it's illegal to hold over 10,000 in cash I believe so it was kind of like a way to keep me from like getting out and my arraignment wasn't for another week so and I had to be transferred and all kinds of other stuff but anyway while I was in there um, you know I, I started reading my Bible and God was speaking to me and I remember one of the nights uh, after I'd been transferred to Carroll County real dingy uh, and got put into like a dormitory with a bunch of other guys and I remember being in there and like there was this guy who was real quiet all day like kind of kept to himself but at night it was weird they turned the TV off at like 10 or 11 and um, yeah we basically like I've never laughed more in my life because we had all just like gathered around like the bathroom light which was the only one left on in the dorm and we're all just telling jokes and laughing and you know I kind of went back to my cot to you know or actually I didn't even have a cot I was sleeping on the floor with a, a mat and uh, anyway I went back to my area and this guy started talking to me for a while and he's like I think everything's gonna work out for you he's like uh, but just remember to thank the big guy upstairs when you get out and it was like a couple of days later uh, I did a virtual court hearing where you know for my arraignment to sign bond etc or whether they were even gonna drop it well they definitely didn't drop it and uh, I got released on house arrest um, and while I was on house arrest I went to the border of my parents land and got down on my hands and knees and I looked over at this just beautiful sunset and I started just screaming in the air that I am but a worm in your talons God I am a worm and I am feeble and the way my heart pleaded to him uh, thankfully he decided to show me favor and you know after probation and being sentenced to a, a year on the shelf and a lot of other things um, you know I, I made my way on my journey you know I learned my lesson and uh, kept on going and it was really like the first time that he and I had really had a relationship in my whole life and you know after that it was kinda like when you get out of trouble you sometimes go right back into it especially if you know it, it you're young and stupid and you don't learn your lesson and there was a lot of things that he saved me from uh, you know literally grazed by well I really started bettering myself and I actually started working at a uh, Christian theme park, the Ark Encounter, in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky. And while working there, you know, I had a lot of great influences, but at some point, you know, I kind of, I don't know, I started drinking heavy and all kinds of other stuff, and, you know, my wife and I weren't getting along, and I wasn't training as serious as I should have been two, three days a week and I was kinda going off the path well at the time I had transferred to a different department where my starting shift was 5 a.m. I would work 5 a.m. to 1 30 p.m. so one morning and every day I would set my alarm for 4 I would take a shower the night before and basically have all my clothes ready and just get straight up throw my clothes on brew some coffee get a cup of coffee and walk down the stairs and up until this point like I knew God was real but I truly like never seen him act like if you will directly 
Well, this morning I noticed there was a little light outside and I realized that my alarm didn't go off. And I woke up and the first person first thing I did was blame my wife. And you know, I'm getting ready and I'm I'm pissed and I'm, you know, upset and blaming her, trying to get ready still and everything and I realized, you know, I'd overslept. Well, I get ready and I'm I'm walking down the stairs of our apartment at the time and there's like a door in the front with a window. And while I'm walking down, I like I, was, I had maybe been up for like 10 minutes max trying to get everything ready, you know, clothes on, everything, find my keys, etc. Well, as I'm walking down, I see at the bottom there's a white book like this, just sitting perfect. And I'm like walking down and I realize it's this family Bible that I keep in my car or kept in my car at the time. Mind you, I wasn't making very much money. I was making like 11 bucks an hour. And, um, you know, we, I was trying to support my family and we only had one vehicle, uh, you know, things were tight, but we were getting by, but I walked down and I realized that it is my Bible. And for a second, I thought I was like dreaming. I thought I was dreaming that this Bible was there because I'm like, how could this be there? And right beside it, I saw one of my daughter's toy knives and I'm like, what? Well, I look up. And at the time we were driving a Cobalt, a uh, Chevy Cobalt, and uh, it was a four-door. Well, I look up at it, and it was parked on the street right there, and it had been completely smashed in. I mean completely smashed in. It looked like the Hulk had came and went, and just smashed this car. And I got down on my hands and knees, and I started screaming, like, Why? And I'm just like punching the concrete and I'm freaking out. Well, literally at the same time, my boss drives by and he was, you know, supposed to come in at seven or whatever it was. And he's like, hey, 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 you know, he pulls across the street and he's like, hey, look, don't worry about being late, you know, yada, yada. Because so I was explaining to him, like, hey, I'm sorry, you know. And he's like, look, don't worry about it. Uh, just call me and let me know what happens, you know, yada, yada. And I'd called the police of course and come to find out uh, it was a a person who had fallen asleep at the wheel and they were driving a really big truck well we only had liability insurance on our vehicle come to find out they didn't have insurance so we were completely out of car um, yeah I could sue the guy and it take years and years and years and years to get a fraction of the money back but my family needed a car then uh, to get by. You know, I, I was the breadwinner, and we needed a car then. And come to find out, um, about a week later, I got the police report. So you remember earlier I told you how my alarm didn't go off. My phone didn't die. The alarm was set. The alarm was never snoozed. The alarm was good to go. There was nothing wrong. It just never went off. Almost like that time never happened for the phone, if you will. Um, well, I get the police report, and I realize that he hit my vehicle at 4.34 a.m. Might not sound that interesting, right? Like, why does that, why does that matter? So, like I told you earlier, every day I would wake up at 4.00. I would get ready and by 4.30 I would be walking down the stairs. And we had two big flights of stairs. Um, you know, sometimes it might be 4.31 by the time I grab key, phone, keys, wallet, you know, all that stuff, coffee. Well, I walked down the stairs and where I parked on the road, okay, like this, you know, if I park here, if I saw a car coming, I would stand behind. That way I didn't open my door and then side swipe my door. So I, if I would have been down there at the normal time that day if my alarm would have went off I would have been standing behind my vehicle waiting for the car to pass and it would have veered over and killed me it would have cut me in half or smashed me in completely and I'd be dead if my alarm would have went off but on that day the only time it ever happened my alarm did not go off it was not snoozed. 
it was set before I went to sleep. It said you have X amount of time till you get up. It was good to go. God himself had came over me and protected me. And it was like, I didn't have anything. I had like $100 in my account at the time because we had just paid everything. I had nothing. But the one thing I had, which is everything, was God. I knew he saved me. Because let's say it was just a random happenstance. What are the odds that out of all the times my phone would malfunction and the alarm wouldn't go off, it would be on the morning where I would have died if it would have. I would have died if that alarm would have went off. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of those situations where, like, I would honestly be foolish to just chalk it up to chance because in my entire life, I've never seen chance like that. And, you know, that's not even, that's not even all of it. it it's like a week later, I'd been praying a lot on it um, financially because I was literally doomed. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was relying on a couple kind people for rides to work, but there was absolutely no way that would last long term. Well, you know, some, some people in the local community, shout out to Harry Hunsucker, a uh, UFC fighter. He raised about $500 to donate to me and even kind of looked around for like a real cheap car that I could just use to get to work until everything worked out. Well, the Ark Encounter has a lot of very... Um, very well-off Christian families that work there that they'll send their kids there you know for summer jobs and stuff and um, one of the uh, executives family members had was friends with me we would chat all the time I, I would you know see them out and um, you know just talk to them they're really good people and uh, you know I never I never solicited anything from anyone or tried to get money from anyone but they had happened to see what I was going through well she sees me walking to the bus one day uh, and goes hey can I give you a ride home me and my daughter will give you a ride home I was like thank you that, that sounds great I really appreciate it so you know I, I get in their car and we have a beautiful conversation on the way back and just talk about how good God is and you know they didn't even bring up the car thing well come to find out she had raised some money or I, I want to tell you how it happened but she gave me a card when I got out and on the card it had a, a chapter from Matthew I can't think off the top of my head but it talks about you know I am God and if I take care of the birds of the air will I not take care of thee are you not greater than them is my love for you not greater and when I open the card up there's one thousand dollars inside In my entire life, I've never had a series of circumstances that made me see how God works through people. And it's it's not the money. It's not anything like that. It's like submission. And, and I'm eternally grateful for that because I ended up going and getting, putting a down payment on a really great vehicle, uh, great gas mileage, safe. I still have it today. It's sitting outside. Um, it literally saved my life. And not just a physical sense, financial sense, a spiritual sense. And, you know, since that day, that was one of the real true, like, the shit. Oh, too, about the car. Um, so it didn't even wake us up when the car got hit. So let me explain. Again, the street's here, but my apartment was two stories up. So I'm 30 feet directly above it. My window is right above the city, or right above the street. You're telling me I didn't hear a Ford F-350 crash into a Cobalt at 45 miles an hour? It literally pushed the vehicle 20 feet up out of where it was parked at. And it didn't wake me up. And it makes me think about the, the Jews when they were uh, being enslaved by the Egyptians. And um, Moses tells them to put the blood of the lamb above their door in the the angel of death won't visit them and I feel like that night I had the blood of the lamb above my door and 
you know, since then I've had countless other things where God has spoke to me. And, you know, I don't expect God to appear as a burning bush. But what I do know is that if I pray to him and I surrender to him, he makes a way for me every time. And I truly hope that, in a way, this this video, this, this story that I've told you and shared with you, um, I really hope it, it opens your heart up to submission. And it can be hard, especially if pride is your main sin. Submission is very hard. Um, you know, you're, I'm, you're preaching, at, I'm preaching at the choir. I, I'm calling the kettle black because that's one of my biggest sins is pride. But just remember, even if you're not perfect, God wants you. God wants every single person on this planet to submit and just be for him. Because what he has for you is greater than anything on this earth. What he has for you in the long term is greater than what you have now. Yeah, it can be hard sometimes. And it will be hard. It will be. But just like anything in life, if it's difficult, most of the time it's worth having. I want to take a moment and say a prayer. I don't want to convolute this video with you know, appealing to people, to be honest. I just felt it on my heart to share with you all uh, my encounter with it, how I felt about the word fake Christian, and what I think it takes to truly have a relationship with God. God, I just want to thank you for my friend this morning for speaking or for using I'm thankful for you using him to speak your message to me God you know sometimes I get so focused on promoting fights or other things that I forget to share my testimony of my experience with you Lord I want to ask that you continue to guide me father as you have I want to ask that even if it's one single person, God, that they watch this and that they submit to you, Lord, I want to pray that you put it upon their heart and convict them, Lord, because what you have for them is so wonderful. You've been so wonderful to me, Lord, and you've helped me so much, and I, I want them to experience that, God. I want them to experience the sheer relief of feeling your wings at, at their back, God. The same feeling I get when I walk out to a fight, God, ultimate trust in them. I want to ask that when they face a horrible situation Lord they look at you they look forward to you and understand that you are the way God even if it's pitch black in front of them Lord you have promised them a stepping stone father I know that you will always guide me and my family Lord and I'm thankful for you and I cannot wait for the day that I get to spend with you Lord in heaven and that I get to meet you and interact with you God and finally get to talk to you face to face Lord and I don't want to wish my life away, God. I, I, My life is absolutely wonderful, Lord, but I know that this earthly life is just the beginning, God. I have an eternity waiting for us, Lord. I have an eternity waiting for my family, Lord, if I simply submit. And I want to ask, God, that you help others submit. Please be gentle, God, but help them understand what submission brings them, Lord. I am incredibly, incredibly thankful for you, and my heart pours out for those out there who are facing the wickedness of this world, God. I want to ask that you strengthen them and make them confident in your word, God. And I want to ask that my friend who was talking to me this morning that inspired this whole thing, God, I hope that when they watch this, Lord, that it helps them, God, because they have helped me so much, and I want to ask that you help me give back, Lord. Please help me give back. I love you, Father, and I just can't express it. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all very much. Uh, this isn't a video I'm trying to push for anything, so liking and subscribing isn't isn't necessary. Um, if, if you do, though, if you like this type of video, comment if you want to see more. I'm willing to do a weekly video just like this where there's no editing, where we just sit down and we have a conversation. Thank you all very much, and I really do love all, all the people who show me support. You know, we're still in the infancy of doing this, but the growth that I've seen in the last year has been insane. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart.